Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about how to use peak and previous scripting function. As their name suggests, these functions behave accordingly where peak can look backward, current or forward data points in a column of interest and then previous is only can look back into the loaded records or the column of interest. So let's understand this with the help of the air passenger data which I have shown over here. So this data is distributed over different months and years and the data point which is a column name as data is showing how many passengers were there for air travel. And we are interested in seeing the change month over month to understand and see whether they're kind of there are any kind of seasonal change or seasonal interruptions into the data and here I have this passenger variable column which shows that uh, variance so I have just incorrectly hit the selections so I'll just clear it out and this is the old state where from Jan to Fab there is a variance or increment of six air passengers similar is the case from 118 to 132 from Fab to March where is an increment of 14 passengers. So this is an increment which I have defined backend in the script with the help of peak function. So let's go back into the script by pressing Ctrl E. And here is my data of air passengers where I'm say loading this data by year month and data is the air passengers data. And I'm saying when the month is Jan, then there is no difference. That means we are starting the data points over here and before that there was no change and initializing it to zero. But in other months, we need to take a difference from data. So the data column which I have taken from here and then subtracting it the previous month information. So for example, if I am in fab, so this is the fab data and peak is saying that, hey, go one month back by specifying minus one and subtract it from the current month and give me the final value in the passenger variable column. So if you observe this is an interesting function because data has not been loaded so far and while the data is loading you can actually perform the manipulation on the data which is getting loaded. So this is one way via which you can go backward if you want the current row or the first row then you can specify zero in that case it will always take the first row of the column or the first row or the first data point of your interest in a particular column or if you want to go forward then you can specify the positive sign as plus one or simply one specifying that if I am here in Jan then it is taking the fab data in this case. So I have shown you how in different way you can use the peak function. So for now, I will just hit the minus one, which is saying that go back to the previous record, which in this case, gen is all already initialized to zero. So when it is in fab, then it is picking up to the, or having a glance of the uh, gen data and fetching the data and then doing the subtraction from the fab data. And finally, we are getting the results. So for now, I'll just click the reload. And you can see there will be no change into this data. And I will hit close button. Nothing is in there, right? The similar thing I have drawn over here, it is just to show you how you can draw this data um, year over year and see the difference. And wherever you see a lot of uh, downfall or up or a lot of passengers are getting added, you can actually find what is really going on. So for example, I have shown over here where, you know, air passenger data is uh, drastically dropped down in 1958. When I Googled it, I figured it out. The Munich air disaster was, occurred in 6th Fab 1958. And maybe one of the biggest reason that a lot of people have denied or uh, did not prefer air travel as their medium of travel. So that's how you can use the uh, peak function to get the variance, draw it over the chart and figure out some kind of intelligence from it and see how the trend is. In a similar way, you can use the previous scripting function 
So for that, let's go back into the script. So instead of saying peak, let's say previous, previous, and we don't need to put any kind of stuff over here, like minus four or anything, because its name suggests that you want to look at the data point which is just loaded or previous to the current data point. So for now, you just hit save and you will see there is no change into this passenger variance column. For now, let's click close after this. And there is no change. Also, since we are here on the previous function, if I want to go two step back, then I need to nest it previous function by saying previous and within that previous. So in that way, now this, it is looking up two data points back into the same column. That means if it is March row or the March data point, then it will look at the Jan data point. So in that way, you can nest and go back. But the downfall is that as compared to the peak function that you cannot move in the forward direction which is the case with the peak function and the peak functions becomes really useful in that kind of a scenario where we want to subtract the uh, Jan data from the fab or March data which is not really loaded so far. So peak function becomes really handy and helps us doing that calculation for our dashboarding requirement and all. So for now I'll just remove this previous and load the data and finish this presentation for you. So hit close and we are back. So in this way uh, you can use peak and previous function uh, in your scripting and one last thing about peak is that not only the column which you are using from the current table like air passengers in this case I'm using suppose if I want to use the column from a from a different table altogether you can actually specify this so for now if i just remove the p previous i will hit p and here in this definition you can see you can specify field name row number that is in minus one zero or a positive number and then the table name so this table name features really helps us in getting the data from different table so in that case you all all you need to make sure is that your column and the table name is basically surrounded by a single quotation so what i mean by that that if i'm using data from a different uh, table then i will just go ahead put it into a single quotation use minus one to look at the previous record and maybe that data is something like uh, previous air passenger so what it is saying that look for the previous air passenger table which I may have specified earlier. So that's the point. It should be the table should be defined prior to this table and then look for this data column in that table and then read the previous record from the current record. So in that way you can get columns data from other tables too. So it this feature makes it really really powerful because not only you can look for or have a glance to a previous current or next record not only the current table but also in other tables of your interest so i hope you have found it useful and i will meet you in the next video the new topic